I saw an advert online for a building job in the UK. I called this Polish guy. He told me it would cost 400 pounds, but promise regular work as soon as we arrived. He said he would sort out somewhere to live with the other men I would be working with. I was happy and optimistic. I had lost my job in Poland and had no money. I was told I could pay for my transport and accommodation out of my first month's wages. It looked like a chance for a new life. I was driven to the UK in a minibus with some other people and dropped off outside the accommodation. I came to the UK three years ago looking for work. I got some occasional shifts as a cleaner, but I wanted a permanent job with a regular pay. A friend told me he knew someone who could find work for me in a salad packing factory and he gave me a number to call. I called the number. It was a Lithuanian man. He said the work was guaranteed. I transferred £300 to him and he told me to contact a lady at a recruitment agency who would organise the work for me. I started temporary work at the factory through the recruitment agency. And things were better. Even though I wasn't earning a lot of money, I finally had a routine and some stability in my life. A man picked me up in the BMW, took me to a house and told me I could stay there, but I would need to pay a £250 deposit for the rent. I had no money, so he said he would add it to what I owed him for transport. He took my passport and identity card to complete the paperwork for my job. I lived with some other men who had also come over to find work. The house was overcrowded with dirty mattresses and sheets. It didn't feel safe. The job I was promised didn't exist. I wasn't given work for six weeks. I was living with no money to support myself and completely dependent on the agent for my living costs. Each week I owed him more money since I was building up debt for food and rent. The agent made me open a bank account so I could apply for jobs, but he kept the bank card. I applied for a permanent job at the factory. The man who arranged the job called me and said that I had to pay him another £500 now that I had a permanent job. I told him I didn't have enough money and he threatened to send some people to collect the money from me. The week after, I was walking home from work when a man stopped me. He grabbed me by the throat and demanded I give him money to repay my debt. He told me he would find me again soon. I heard that other people from the factory owed this gang money too. Some of them quit their jobs and went back to their home country. I eventually saved up and paid back the 500 pounds, but they told me that I owed them interest because I hadn't paid them back on time. I was taken to recruitment agencies to apply for jobs. He told me to give his address instead of the one I was living at. He told me a mobile phone number to give as the recruitment agency would text me when more work was available. I was given a temporary job packing chicken in a factory. As soon as I was paid each week, he would use my bank card to take out all of my wages to cover the money I owed for travel and accommodation. He gave me only 20 pounds a week to buy food. I felt constantly threatened by him. Once, when I had been given only three days' work, he got angry and punched me in the face, leaving me with a black eye. I felt ashamed that I had got myself into this situation, but there was no one I could turn to for help. He had total control of my life, and I didn't think I would ever get out of the debt I was in. At the weekend, I went to do my shopping with a friend, and we were attacked by the gang. I was pushed around, and my friend tried to argue with them. They broke her jaw, and she had to be taken to hospital. I was terrified. My life was totally miserable. I didn't leave the house for months except for work, and I couldn't sleep because I was too scared that the gang might come to my house in the night. 
I wanted to ask for help, tell someone what was going on, but I didn't know who could help. I thought about calling the police, but I didn't know if they would understand or help, and I was scared that the gang would find it out. A detective came to my house with a Lithuanian translator and said he was investigating a gang that had been threatening workers in the area. He said that he could protect me from them. I told him everything that had happened, and he asked me if I would be willing to give evidence in a trial. After I had worked and lived like this for over a year, the police and gangmaster's licensing authority came to my house one day. They took me to a place where I could recover, be helped to find a good job, and support myself. This is all I ever wanted. Four men were arrested from the gang. And later I found out that there were dozens of workers at the factory who had been threatened by this gang. The police found new homes to those who had been badly hurt and they also arranged protection for their families in Lithuania. I'm all right now, working a new job here for a good agency. But I've been through a tough time. When I look back at everything that's happened, I realize how easy it is to get trapped in a really bad situation. I should never have paid for a job that I didn't know existed. I should never have paid for a job. This is not legal in the UK. I should never have given away my passport and identity card. By then, it was already too late. I should never have got into debt with someone I didn't know or trust. I was stuck in debt to him, and he controlled my bank account. I was afraid that he would attack me if I did anything wrong. I know there are still many more people who are trapped like I was. If my story sounds like yours, or someone you know, please be aware that there are several ways to get help and to get out of this position. Don't get trapped like I was. And if you know anyone who is, contact the Gangmasters Licensing Authority or Migrant Help. Anything you say will be kept confidential. If you are being threatened, or you think you are in immediate danger, please call the police by dialing 999. Don't suffer in silence.